Hey everybody, Brandon Beliso here, hanging out at One Martial Arts Mailway with my guy, Sifu Dela Cruz. We're working on copy, we're writing flows. So once a youth karate prospect opts into our website, we need to send them a flow. So we're putting one together right now. So the first email that we got, I think it's kind of cool. So it's gonna kind of go like this. Thank you for checking out the youth karate program at One Martial Arts. If you're like most parents, you look at your child and wonder, what kind of person will they grow up to be? You realize as a parent, you have a big influence on that outcome, and it can be a bit overwhelming at times. Which school should you enroll them in? And what extracurricular activities should they participate in? You realize that it's up to you to make the right choices to give your child the tools to make the best life possible. One of those choices is, in, is clear, and that is enrolling in the martial arts. The life skills benefit alone, such as focus, confidence, and self-discipline, will give your child a better opportunity at succeeding in life. They will learn to be more goal-oriented and the values of always doing the right thing. You can be assured at One Martial Arts they will always, we, that we will always reinforce good family values first above anything else that we teach. Ah, you feel me? Powerful. Then we'll do a thing on benefits. We'll put in some testimonials into that email. Then we'll wrap it up with a call to action. See what parents like you are saying about our programs? You're definitely making the right choice because you're reading this now. Now take the next step in your child's success by enrolling in our special trial offer. In four weeks, you will see your child stand taller, make strong eye contact, and speak with a confidence like never before. We look forward to serving your family. And that's it. Then after that, they click and they go to the call to, uh, they, they go to, the call to action. So that's going to be the first one. All right, this is our second email, and the headline's going to read, still thinking about it? So when you get your email, it'll say one martial arts, then the, the body of the message will be still thinking about it. What's next in the second in the sequence for those who did not open? Exactly, Xander, exactly, exactly. So for those who did not open, you know, we want to go back and probably retarget the original. See, remember, they've already opted in. They've opted in, Xander. So we've got their email. We have that information. It's there. So if they don't, opt in after the first email. This is the second one we send them, okay? The second email. Still thinking about it? We get it. Making a commitment to another activity for your kid is hard, right? But what's four weeks? Give us four weeks and we promise you'll start to see improvements in your child's focus, respect, and confidence. What's cool about us is we are a month to month with no cancellation fees, no contracts, and no enrollment fees. We want your family to love to be here. And then we do a testimonial. We have been with One Martial Arts for four years now. There's a continuous communication between the instructors and the parents, and they work with each child based upon their individual needs. One Martial Arts is an active partner in raising confident, strong, and happy children. I strongly recommend One Martial Arts and M. And gets it. She digs the benefits that our martial arts programs have to offer. Then we go through focus, discipline, respect, confidence, a couple of bullet points, which they say is really, really good. I know you... I, I know you're feeling it, right? We'd love to meet your child and have some martial arts fun. So check out our offer. Click here. Live your best life. The One Martial Arts team. So Xander's asking me, and of those who clicked but did not purchase. Um, so what we do, Xander, just, just to get you up to speed on that, when somebody sends us their information, right, say their email and name, we put them into a flow. And each flow always gives them the opportunity to click on an offer and physically buy a trial membership with us. So what we're, I guess we're really trying to do, and you can help me out, Xander, because I know you know a lot about this. What we're really trying to do with our email flows is to plant seeds, build relationships, you know, give them our why, as well as ask them the right questions to get them engaged, and as well as find some common ground. That's why that opening email that we talk about, um, if you're like most parents, you wonder what your kid's going to grow up to be, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Do you have a sequence of emails without a call to action? What I was no, what I know shocking. What? What I know shocking? What does that mean, Xander? Yeah, we, well, we try to do a soft sell uh, on that CTA, Xander. If, if you look at it, in the bottom of that, um, we try to keep it soft. Somebody else said to me, we should do no call to action in the first email. Do you agree with that, Xander? I've heard that too, that we should do no call to action in the first email and we should just ask very general questions. Um, I got that yesterday 
you know, when I was talking to Scott over at Rainmakers, just just very basic questions. You're just trying to make introductions. But if they've left their name and their email, they're obviously interested. So that's the angle. Yep, no, no CTA in the first one, 100%. Okay, so we're going to try that because we noticed, yeah, the survey thing, actually, you know, ding, 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 I got that. The whole survey thing, asking the right questions so we know what bucket to put them in, right? Borrowing from the book, Ask. That's what you're talking. Have you read Ask, Xander, by Ryan Levesque? How do you pronounce his last name, Teach? Levesque. Levesque. Ryan Levesque. Did you read Ask, Xander? Yep. So we're going to do that. We're going to try that. No CTA in the first one. Uh, we're going to do a little more of the survey because we noticed already we did a, one for our kickboxing program, folks, and we got an amazing response from the second email. Still thinking about it was, was the title of that email. And the third email, you know, what are you waiting for? Those two emails did very, very well. Yes. Oh, here's one. Permission Marketing. That's a book, right, Xander? Permission Marketing. I'll have to get that one. Pres permission Marketing. Cool. We'll check that one out as well. Okay, so we're going to retool our first email, folks. And the first email, we're going to have no call to action. We're going to survey and ask those questions. Scott, you're on here with us. Xander, what kind of questions would you ask a mom with a six-year-old son that's thinking of enrolling in our um, youth karate trial? What are some of the questions you answer? Help me for the listeners, for everybody watching live right now. What questions we ask? Xander, let's chat. We can do some awesome stuff together. Oh, I know we can. And we know content's the king in writing killer copy that's going to help these martial arts school owners turn those web leads into trials and trials into active is really the goal. But as long as it's not salesy, I like permission marketing. That works for me. I don't want to be salesy, Xander. I want to be heartfelt, true. I want to stand out from the rest, not using no fear, no sex, none of that stuff. Cool? Say, so, hey, folks, come on, give me a couple, Scott, Xander. What questions should we ask in that initial email? If we're not going to put a call to action, what are we going to ask them? We're not going to give them the schedule or class times or anything like that in the first email. What would we give them in that first email? Xander, you're saying survey. What would we say in those survey questions? Scott, you mentioned next, yesterday questions. What questions would I ask? Come on, don't leave me hanging. Come on, folks. We got a lot of listeners here. We want to give them love, Xander. Come on, Scott. We talked about that yesterday. How? What questions are we going to ask? What should they be? What questions would you put in that first email to mom with a six-year-old kid who's inquiring about our youth karate program? A hundred percent. Be you. Get some personal info on them: age, skill level, and goals. Okay. Hundred percent. Hmm. So do you like that opening line that we put in there? Thank you for inquiring about our program. You look at your child and wonder what kind of person they'll grow up to be. You realize as a parent, you have a big influence on that outcome. It can be a bit overwhelming. Would you do all that, Xander, or not? Reason is you are going to make flows based on that. Well, isn't the flow based upon their mom with a six-year-old kid inquiring about our youth karate program? Isn't that what the flow is based upon? Because they can, when they opt in, they can opt in for our excellent kids program, which is four to six. They can opt in for our youth karate. They can opt in for our kickbox and they can opt in for our adult martial arts. They can opt in for day camp. So we know coming in at that point, what they've opted in for. So isn't our, our email flow going to be based upon the initial information we've already collected. Yeah, it is. And you want, so it speaks exactly to them. Oh, you already have that information. Yes, we do. We do. We have that information. So what I'm trying to do with our first initial email when me and, and, and uh, Mr. Delacruz were talking about it was really about connecting with the parents. So I felt as a parent, you look at your child and wonder what kind of person they'll grow up to be. You know, it's up to us to make those, those choices for them. And one of those choices is clear, and that's the martial arts. Boom. Right? 
So you wouldn't put a CTA in, in the first one. I know we want to put benefits. I know we want to put reviews or testimonials. Um, all that's there. So I don't want to put a CTA in that first email, correct? Is that what you're still telling me? And you guys, if you get a chance, check out Xander. I can never say his last name right. Z-A-Y-D-M-A and Zaidman. Check him out. He's got a lot of good stuff on email marketing and the whole thing about branding. Um, he's, he's a buddy of mine at Facebook. No CTA still, huh? Okay. Should we ask them, um, hey, if you want to learn more, call us at this number or feel free if we can serve you better, leave us your number and we'll call you. Should we put that in there to try to make a better connection and, and higher level of service? Because we try not to ask for their phone number right off the bat. We just say name and email. What do you think, Xander? If there's no CTA, should we put an option for them to call us? Or us to call them? One more, Xander. A little more love there. I think you and I are going to have to do a webinar on this, sir, because that's one of the big things we as school owners are working on is to learn to write copy based upon our why and who, who, who's the better architect, who's the better storyteller of our business than ourselves. So I, I think it's really important that we learn to do some of that so we're educated, and at least if we decide to enlist services like mine or yours, that people coming aboard have some kind of um, gauge on what's a good company to work with or not. So no CTA, would you ask for a phone number at that point to call them or, at, or leave our number for them to call us? Last one then, then I'll let you go, Xander. So I have that information, so I don't need to ask those general questions to decide what bucket to put them in. So there's no call to action. So what should that first email be about? And can I ask for their number? Is that appropriate or leave my number? Yes. What about using a story of one of your students where they began, what they learned in? Okay. Okay. I'm good with that. So folks, I'm going to cut it off there because me and Mr. Delacruz are going to get back to work. I just wanted to share with you, this is the process. You want to know what it takes to have 360 students at one location, 560 at the other. This school, this new location is 22 months old. We do 750, 750 in our second year. It's educating yourself. I'm not a copywriter. I'm learning to write copy because that's valuable. Content, knowing the right content to put at your website, the right content to put in your emails, to tell your story, to establish your why, you know, to tell stories of your students. I like that one. I think we're going to have to put that in. You know, maybe we use Janice, have her write a short story for kickboxing. We'll put that. Does it matter if that story is in the first, second, or third email, Xander? What do you think? I like that idea. I like that. I like that mom's testimonial that you chose, Teach, in the second one. Maybe we'll bump that one up. I like Anne's. Her, her testimony is great. You know, we have been with Mon Martial Arts for four years now. There's continuous communication between the instructors and the parents, and they work with each child based upon their individual needs. I mean, that's us in a nutshell. One Martial Arts is an active partner in raising confident, strong, and happy children. I strongly recommend One Martial Arts and M. Very cool, right? I think that's a good one. Let's look at this other one. Oh, yeah, he put it in the first one. That's kind of a story, wouldn't you think, Xander? What do you think? Or should we draw that out a little more detail? Give it a little more beef. You know, I know this can be boring, overwhelming stuff for people. Ideally, it is a sequence of stories. Let them choose to come and not hard sell them. When they sign up, you want to bring them into your ecosystem. That's exactly how I feel, Zan. So when do you put in the CTA? The second email, the third, or the fourth? Because I was told, you know, do emails two days apart, do four of them and leave them alone. Don't bombard them. You know, I signed up for this one Tony Robbins thing, and they send me emails every day. The guilt emails, sympathy emails, I'm sorry emails. I've gotten every type of email from them, and I know what they're doing. They're fishing to see who I am and what I'm going to respond to, what buttons they can push. I get that. I get that. So when do you leave them your number, Xander? And when do you put in the call to action? Second, third, or fourth email? And are you in agreements that we do them two days apart? Last one, Xander. Then I got to get out of here. Think of it as a bank account. Six deposits and one withdrawal. Yeah, I get it. Okay. 
I get it. I get it. I get it. I got it. Because you're right. Because it was by the second and third emails I'm getting responses on, on kickboxing in San Francisco, that they're asking, actually asking me for a schedule and asking me um, what programs we have to offer. Get that, everybody? Six deposits and one withdrawal. Hey, Sanders, thank you, dude. Let's talk offline. Let's talk later on. And I think we might want to do a webinar together. Or, you know, I'd love to get you involved in, in critiquing our copy and looking at what we're putting together uh, for our flows for our school. Cool? Hey, everybody. Brandon Bliso. Go to brandonbliso.com. Check out all my stuff. Check out Xander, man. He's another cool guy. You know, because all I love about him, he's a learner. And like I said, you don't have to be an expert to begin with. Nobody's an expert to begin with. They learn it through reading, education, tons of mistake, trial and error to achieve the results that will ultimately get you the sign up, get you the trial and get you the active students. Cool. Brandonbliso.com. Until we talk again, go out there and live your best life.